this is Chris the Nightmare Ariel, and you're watching Mission Boxing Today on YouTube. Heavyweight boxing fans, what's the deal? All right, so I got some links sent to me, man. It's funny because the first link that I read was uh, Ortiz signs to Eddie Hearn. He signs, he signs the match room, which I made a video when he was going through his whole thing with uh, Golden Boy, and he was trying to get a different promoter i made a video saying that i think he should sign with either um you know align himself with al Heyman, or he should um sign with eddie hearn so he chose eddie hearn which i think is a decent move um you would expect a fight between ortiz and joshua or ortiz and uh dillian white would take place sooner or later um i know white he just outpointed lewison um, seen that fight yesterday, and I know he's talking about possibly trying to fight Derek Chisura, and we know Anthony Joshua, they're still talking about him fighting Klitschko, um, so we have to see what's going to go on, now I did hear Eddie Hearn say about a week ago, I did a video about it, he said that uh, a fight with Ortiz versus Joshua is a possibility for next year this is before he signed ortiz so i'm gonna hold him to his word on that he said that before he signed ortiz that a fight between joshua and ortiz uh is very possible for next year all right um then i get another link sent to me saying that uh ortiz versus carlos tacom is going to happen cool was going to do a video about it before i can even do a video about it Another link was sent to me, and all these links were from Boxing Scene, so shout out to Boxing Scene, and shout out to the people, to the uh, subscribers that were sending me these links. Then I seen another link that said, uh, Takum will take a pass on Luis Ortiz, focus on Johan Duapa. Okay, so once again, Ortiz is not going to get a fight. Pretty sad, man. Uh, now, according to Duapa and his team, they felt that the uh, date against Ortiz was coming up too fast and they wouldn't have enough time to properly prepare for the contest. The fight with Duapa will be targeted for a date in December or early 2017. The split of the money for Takam versus Duapa will be 65-35 in favor of the champion. And Johan Duapa is the silver uh, WBC champion. That title was vacated by Alexander Pavekin. And I believe he won the title. Did he win the title against Takam? I think he won that WBC silver against Takam. Or at the very least, I know he defended it against Takam. Uh, either way, Duapa went on to defeat Robert Herlinius for the vacant silver title. And that's how he holds on to this uh, WBC silver title. Um, now, I came out with a video about Duapa. What was that, last week or a few days ago? Saying that Duapa was targeting... Uh, uh, he, well, he said that he wanted to fight Hay. Or Joshua. He said he's willing to fight him. He'll come to the UK to fight him. I came out that video like a few days ago. So I know Duopo is going to be in for a tough fight. And I do think this Takum fight. I think it's an even fight. I think it's going to be a tough fight. And it could be a debatable fight. I'm not sure he's going to win yet. But I think it is a tough uh, fight. Alright. Now as far as Takum turning down the uh, November 12th date. And Monte Carlo. Against Ortiz. At this point, when it comes to Ortiz, it doesn't surprise me, man. I mean, I've heard Andy Ruiz say this. Uh, this was prior to the uh, Thompson fight, when before Thompson-Ortiz was signed. Remember, uh, Ortiz was going to fight Demetrinko. Then Demetrinko didn't want the fight. Then they then Thompson started calling him out because the fight was going to be in D.C. anyways. So Thompson started calling out Ortiz, and that's how they got the fight. But before that fight... Uh, Ortiz, man, he it just seems as if he can't get a fight with anybody. Then the Houston off situation, people were leaving me uh messages saying, yeah, you know, if Ortiz is so badass, why didn't he fight Houston off? And Houston off wanted to fight him. I'm like, dude, have you not been like watching the different news that's been coming out? Houston off didn't want to take Vada. Well, according to um, Ortiz manager, he said that uh, Houston off didn't want to take Vada. That that's why they pulled out the Houston off fight. Then I had people leaving me messages saying, oh, well, that's ironic for a drug cheat like Ortiz to get mad because somebody doesn't want to use Vada. It's like, well, man, you guys got to make up your mind here, okay? Yes, Ortiz tested positive for um, a drug that he wasn't supposed to have. He served his time, served his suspension, man. How, how long are we going to keep harping on that shit? On top of, Ortiz said, you know what? I made a mistake. 
My bad. I paid for it. Now, going forward, I want VADA year-round testing to prove that I'm innocent, that I'm not taking anything. It's like once a guy does wrong, then you just want him to prove that he's not dirty anymore, right? Or you don't want him in, you, that you don't want to see him fight. You can't have it both ways, man. We can't, uh, once he wants Vada and wants not only himself, but his opponent to be on an even playing field, whether you think it's bogus or not, to me, that's the right thing to do. How long are we going to keep holding on to the Latif Coyote situation? Was it the Coyote fight? I think it was the Coyote fight. You know what I mean? Like, how long are we going to keep holding on to this shit, man? Uh, the dude wants to, you know, clear his name right now. So, shit, man, you got to commend him for that. And if you want to fight him and if you want him to be clean, well, shit, take the Vada uh, testing, the random testing. You know, so I don't know, man, this this is just ridiculous, man. Now, who is who is Ortiz going to fight? I have no clue. You know, I, I, I really have no clue who, who he's going to fight next. Um, I would have loved to see the Taco fight, although I, I would have favored Ortiz in that fight. And, you know, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, people are saying that he's old and this and that. And some people think that uh, he's he's older than, I think they say he's 36, 37. I've actually heard fighters say that he's in his 40s. I think Jarrell Miller said he's in his 40s or something. But either way, though, whether he's old or whatever you think, how about this guy's go in there and fight him and beat his ass then? Since he's so old or he's so this or so that, just get in the ring and beat him. I don't get what's the holdup with these fighters when it comes to fighting Luis Ortiz. You know, Tony Thompson actually called him out. And Ortiz wasn't even thinking about Thompson. Just he needed an opponent. And Thompson said, shit, I'll fight him. He, he lost, but shit, I mean, he stepped in there and fought the dude. You know, it's all these fighters, man. They're pulling all these fucking shenanigans when it comes to Ortiz, man. Or, you know, if it's a guy that's in the IBF, then they want to use the excuse, oh, well, he's not rated by the IBF. Or, hey, he's not rated by the WBC. And those are all facts. But does Luis Ortiz really need to be rated? For you to fight him, I mean, if you beat him, the fans who follow the heavyweight division, we know Luis Ortiz is a top six heavyweight, top five. Some people think he's the best heavyweight. And we will really know who's the best heavyweight until these guys get in there and fight each other. But if you have to put money on a fighter, I will put Ortiz up there, man. He has, in my opinion, he has one of the most dangerous weapons in the heavyweight division. That's his left hand. Whether it comes in a form of an uppercut, a straight left hand or a left hook the shit is dangerous man I, I i've been watching uh well i've watched a lot of his fights but over the last week i've been watching just watching his fights in depth and just looking at footwork and just looking at things that um probably the average fan wouldn't be looking at but i'm looking at just like the glove placement uh just his footwork how he fights when he's going backwards how he fights in the trenches how he fights when he's walking you down when does he like to walk you down just you know just looking at shit man and uh he's very dangerous man regardless of the fact of how old you think he is to me he doesn't fight like a necessarily like a young fighter he doesn't fight with this high motor he fights very calm very relaxed and he fights like somebody that's been in there before you know he doesn't go out and try to blow you out in one round now if he hurts you he'll jump on top of you but he doesn't fight like a quote you know young fighter anyways um he is there to be hit. Now, I, I, I've seen Ortiz get hit some, you know, get hit a lot. Uh, so he isn't somebody that, you know, has, you know, Muhammad Ali type of reflexes and he's going to, you know, try to make you miss every punch. He's going to give and take. You know, and if his chin can hold up, man, he is very dangerous, man. Like, I, you know, if I had to pick some of the most dangerous weapons in a division, I had to pick, let's say, five of the most dangerous weapons from all the heavyweights. Ortiz's left hand would be in there. It, that that would be one of my one of the most dangerous weapons that's out there right now. I mean, he, guys are walking into these uppercuts. Like, I was watching the Jennings fight. I must have watched about six, seven times, man, over the last week. And um, there is no way Jennings is going to win that fight. They can rematch a million times, and Jennings will never win that fight, in my opinion. Uh Ortiz is just, he's just, <clears throat> he's, 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 he's crafty, man. He's, he's a crafty guy. Uh, some of the things that he was doing, and now Jennings landed some good uppercuts in that fight against Ortiz. Snapped his head back a few times. He landed some good shots on Ortiz. But Ortiz was just walking him into shots. When Jennings thought it was safe, it wasn't safe. Then that right hook that he was throwing, uh, 
was throwing Jennings off. I think that was the punch that initially hurt Jennings in that first round was a short. It was so short. The HBO crew thought it was a left hand that hurt him. I remember Bernard Hawkins saying it was a straight left hand that hurt him, Jim. And I'm looking like, no, it wasn't. It was a right hook that clipped him. You barely seen it. It was so fast and it was it hit him right on the point of the chin and it was a right hook. Uh, the Barrett fight, I mean, he was hitting Barrett with some some nasty straight left hands. And Barrett isn't a world beater, but he's an experienced guy that's been in there with his fair share. Thompson, he was just beating him down, man. I mean, this... I think Ortiz has a chance, a better, you know, a very good chance of beating anybody in heavyweight division. That goes for Wilder, goes for Parker, goes for Joshua, all those guys. You know, I, I debate a lot with guys about uh, Joshua versus Ortiz, and people think that Joshua go in there and just walk right through him. Dude, Joshua, you know, is a straight up and down fighter as far as uh, his style and coming forward. You know, he's a very powerful guy. Um, keeps the high guard up somewhat, likes to throw the jab and come down the pike with the right hand, like to throw combinations, but haven't seen him really fight on his back foot. Now, I seen him slightly go on his back foot to counter. I seen him do it against Martin in Brazil. So I'm not saying I never, but I haven't really seen him win rounds just by using, you know, jabs or keeping the guy off him. Now I seen Wilder do it with the same thing with Wilder. His damn defense is so leaky at times and he keeps his hands so far away from his chin. He likes to just lean back and um use his reflexes to get out the way. To me, Luis Ortiz is too crafty of a puncher, man. Just on paper and just looking at it, you know, obviously we need to see these fights take place. But to me, he is a very crafty puncher. He can put together combinations and not just your average jab, right hand, hook, uppercut, uppercut. I'm talking about, you know, Ortiz does this thing while I was watching in a fight, man, a few of his fights <clears throat> where he's a southpaw. And usually when a southpaw gets ready to throw that straight left hand, he'll drop his right shoulder to get you know, the torque on the left hand and throw a straight one. I seen him bend over like he's going to throw the left hand and then boom, came with a quick right uppercut. Just just crafty things that you just, I don't know, there's just certain things that I see in him, man. Maybe the average fan doesn't see. Some people say that he's fat. Okay, I, I guess, if that's what you think. But to me, he looks more like a damn NFL linebacker or something. You know, I look at shoulders, um, you know, because you can tell by a guy's shoulders if he's been in the gym, he's been hitting the mitts or just throwing punches, shadow boxing, you know, shaking loose. Just you can tell when a guy's been in the gym. Now, I understand around the gut area, you can tell if a guy's doing cardio. Uh, I've seen some boxers, man, just use actual sparring as their cardio. I know James Tony was big on that. That's why his stomach, you know, was bulging most of the time. Even back like in 06, 07, when he was campaigning and doing his thing at heavyweight. His stomach was never really cut because he didn't do a lot of road work, a lot of sit-ups. Uh, he pretty much, and I heard Emmanuel Stewart and Roy Jones talk about this, that James Tony pretty much, his cardio was just sparring a whole bunch of rounds in between training camps. Um, Ortiz, man, even when I see him spar, that left hand is, is just so lethal, man. Uppercuts to the stomach, uh, to the chin, left hooks, straight lefts. I wouldn't want to fight him either. So, uh, <laughs> but I'm a fan though, you know. That's the difference between me and these fighters, man. They all want to claim to be the best and fight the best, but nobody wants to fight Ortiz. I, then I came out, I dropped a video I seen on um, Instagram where David Hay, and you guys probably seen that video I had on my page where David Hay was saying, oh yeah, maybe me and Ortiz, and he doesn't want Ortiz. He doesn't want that fight. I don't know, man. I guess we'll have to see and sit and wait to see where T's next opponent is going to be. I'm not saying the guy is unbeatable, you know, so let's not, you know, get to that shit. I don't think he's unbeatable. My five favorite fighters of all time all have losses. Some of them even been knocked out. And for those of you that's new to my channel, Ali, Holmes, Foreman, Tyson, and Holyfield are my five favorite fighters of all time. They've all took losses. Shit, Holyfield has double-digit losses. So... I don't think Ortiz is unbeatable, but I think he is a very tough out for anybody. And I'm going to say more than tough. I mean, that kind of goes without saying. I think he beats probably everybody. Not just because he can't get a fight. 
just when I break his style down, man, I'm looking in some of those fights I watched. I forgot the guy's names because he was knocking them out so fast, but just the power. Uh, he's a fluid fighter. He's so damn calm, man. That's that's one thing. So if I see Wilder or Joshua go in there and try to, you know, throw a whole bunch of combinations and get him out of there fast, I don't think that's going to work. I think he's going to catch one of them dudes in between those combinations with an uppercut or left hand is going to stiffen them up. You know, um, I don't know, man. The saga continues. Ortiz cannot find a fight. You guys, let me know what you think about this in the comment section, man. I'm out.